OTA number four officially in the books for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And joining me now is veteran tight end Chris Manhurts. Chris, number four of, I believe it's nine OTAs. What's the vibe right now in this tight end room for the Jaguars? Um, it's great, man. We're, we're starting to gel really well. And um, we, uh, like I said, we're, we're pretty complimentary pieces for each other. Each of us have different strengths. And, and uh, I think it's good for us to, to build chemistry during this time. I asked Doug, what's the difference between when he arrived here with the tight end room, what it looked like in February, what it looks like today? What's your what's your your view of how the tight end room has evolved since this coaching staff arrived? I was definitely improving, you know, especially early on. We don't know each other. A lot of new pieces. Uh, well, not a lot, but uh, several new pieces just starting to get each get to know each other off the field. And I know that things like that will just make our chemistry that much better once we really uh, get out there on the field. You obviously have the veterans like yourself, Dan, Evan. You got some young, undrafted rookie free agents, and you have another former basketball player. Uh, so is it Nas or Nas? How are we pronouncing? Nas. Nas, okay. What have you seen from Nas and maybe as a former college basketball player yourself, what sort of tips have you given him? Oh, just, just taking things one day at a time, uh, not being too hard on yourself, and just knowing that it, it's, a, it's a process and a journey. Um, and, you know, I know that story all too well. Um, it's been a while, but I remember my first practice just being nervous out there, trying to figure out what to do, how to do things. But eventually the game slowed down for me. So that's that's the pace that he's on. What's the biggest transition? Playing basketball. It sounds That's a loaded question, probably. Going from basketball to football, what's like maybe something people don't realize that's the di most difficult part of the transition? I think probably having like the, the cognitive capacity to like to process things, process the defense, um, all in a nick of time so um, knowing that I think that just comes with preparation and studying and things like that and like I said eventually it'll it'll slow down the guy throwing you the ball, Trevor Lawrence, how have you seen him grow from where he was one year ago to where he is today? Uh, definitely uh, more comfortable in, in his uh, this year compared to last year. And honestly, that's what you expect, uh, making that hump, uh, getting over that hump from last year. Not the ideal situation for a rookie quarterback, but um, he's getting better and he's progressing every day. All right, so off the field, for you, correct me if I'm wrong, you have a little guy who's coming up on one year old, is that correct? Yep. All right, so this is going to be, is this going to be your first Father's Day then? First Father's Day. Okay, so first Father's Day, emotions when you hear those words, first Father's Day. It's amazing. It's just something that I take with a lot of pride. And uh, as a dad, you know that you have a little guy relying on you, so you, you kind of have to set the example in everything that you do. What is your favorite memory year one with CJ? What's been something when you think of your little guy, what's the first thing that you were like, yeah? Uh, probably um, the birthing process. That was that was pretty new for me, and that was pretty uh, amazing to see for my wife to, to endure and go through that. But just seeing something so beautiful just, just coming into fruition, it, it was amazing. What words does he know yet? Anything? Dada. Oh, that was the first word. That was the first word. Okay. That was the first word. So it's good, man. It's very good. What was the, I mean, when that's the first word, it's like, like, how do you react to something like that? I can't really complain about that, right? You know, so. It, Mama probably wasn't too happy. Not too happy, but it comes with a deal, right? <laughs> Love it. Uh, what does being a dad mean to you now with one year under your belt? I think it means everything. Um, it's the best best job uh, that I'll ever have, um, and it's it's ever going. You know, you always have to have the, have it on for him. You know, I might come home tired after a long day of football, but I know that I have to uh, turn on that switch for him and, and be present as much as I can. So Mad Dads is the organization, the, P, the nonprofit that we've teamed up with. They're against, you know, destructive decisions, making sure kids stay on the straight and narrow. They're one of many, though. I know um, Josh and uh, Smoot are also involved with Better Dad Society. What does it mean knowing that there are organizations like that in Jacksonville empowering dads and empowering the next generation of young men? I think it's critical um, having that father or, or father figure, because unfortunately some don't have that. But having that uh, that stable father figure in your life is obviously very critical in the development of kids but also young men in particular.